Peace, peace, y'all. Welcome to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast, available everywhere you listen to your podcasts. Wherever you listen to it, make sure you subscribe. If there's an opportunity to rate and comment, do that for me, too. And be sure to share it with your whole community, man. We're trying to make this thing go as big as we can, representing the underrepresented. Only the way that we can. You know how we do. Hey, yo, this one's going to be really, really good. You're going to dig this one. I have an opportunity to sit and chop it up with a cat that I've known for a minute. So it's so cool to finally have a chance to just sit down, long form interview, because this dude does a ton of junk. So check out this latest episode of the Clip Notes Podcast with the homie, Matt Randall. Support for the Cliff Notes Podcast comes from Acapella Apparel, an idea born from a love of hip-hop, funk, and soul music and its surrounding cultures. With fashion being a huge visual part of the cultures, they've created expressive images to pay homage, invoke nostalgia, and showcase the elements that make up the lifestyle and cultures of these genres. Acapella, apparel for the music lifestyle. For more information, check out acapella.com. That's A K E. P-E-L-E dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, the show you're about to listen to may contain explicit content. So guess what? You need to put them babies to sleep. This is for grown folks only. So we're not held liable for anything you might be offended by. Thank you for listening. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. Available everywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. It's like everywhere. Just, so, just know it's, it's available everywhere you get your podcasts, man. If you listen to this for the first time, I encourage you to subscribe and uh, and share. Let everybody know that you found like the dopest podcast on the planet. We're just trying to grow the, uh, grow the reach, man. Shout out to a couple people. Uh, once I know I said this last time, man, but I got to say it again. The UK has been rocking with us big. So shout out to shout out to my folk in the UK. Shout out to the folk in Asia who rock with us. Once again, shout out to people in Russia who've been rocking with us. It's crazy. Brazil. And then uh in the in the States, man, California still rocks with us heavy. So big ups to all my people down in Cali for uh for rocking with the Cliff Notes podcast and supporting what we do. That's much, much appreciated for real, for real. Uh another thing that I said I was I wanted to start doing. And we did it last time is, you know, the things that the things that we do here on the podcast, everything that actually I do with DJ Cliff Productions, um, this stuff is 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 I do this for the love, man. And I got to show some love to some folk who who show me love, man. So I got to show a big, big love to my folk down from I, I believe they in San Diego um, hip hop food spot who shows major, major love, man. Definitely like not just reposting or or or, you know, re retweeting stuff that I tweet, but like actively promoting things that I do with DJ Cliff Productions. And that's that's huge, man. That's really, really huge because they definitely doing that for the love. So check them out, Hip Hop Food Spot. Uh they promote a bunch of a bunch of stuff regarding hip hop and food as well. So check them out, Hip Hop Food Spot uh, on Instagram for sure. Um and I know that there are other social media platforms, but uh big ups to my people who uh who show love for real. Um all right so this one this one is dope. This one's cool. It's funny we was talking before we turned the microphones on. I have uh I I've been I've known this dude for a minute and it's funny how like when you you know you you rock with folk and you don't even realize how long you've been rock with them or how you know how long you know them or whatever. And we 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 were talking about it and and as we were talking I realized wow that's how far back we go. So um before I before I you know go any further man let them know who you are. Yeah, what's going on, man? It's Matt Randall. <laughs> what's Cliff. good with you, bro? <laughs> Yo, what up, man? Pleasure man, to finally I'm be good. here. Right, right. Yeah. I know we done rocked together on Welcome to the Neighborhood Radio Show. Right. But it's the first time we had a chance to like really sit and chop it up like this. Yeah. So thanks for coming through for real, bro. Oh, yeah, come on. Just rolled out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm saying. I still got my early morning voice hey, on right now. You know what I mean? It's all good. It works. So I so when when I was thinking back to it and you helped me remember, like I've known you, so I've been doing Welcome to the Neighborhood for 10 years. Right. So I've known you probably for at least eight years, if not even longer than that. Something like that. And um, Sounds about right. It's funny because I think you reached out to me and were like, uh, like as an introduction situation mm -hmm. and either asked like if I, if I would play, I don't even think it was play. Like, I think he was like, yo, can I like come through whatever, whatever. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then you hit me back and you were like, 
yo, do you even know who I am? Do you know what I do? And I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so nah. that's that's the that's the thing that I remember, bro. But that was that was cool because um, as an extension to that, another thing that we were talking about a minute ago was relationships, like networking, like really, really building with people. Right. And I think it's really easy to be like, oh yeah, 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 absolutely, whatever, whatever. But you were like, like you kind of called me out, like, bro, do you even know? <laughs> you know, do you even know me? And I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, my whole thing, like. Because I, I do like a multi multitude of things, right? Yeah. So um some people may know me for just recording, engineering and stuff like that, or they might know the music, or they just might know me from the dude that used to work at the co op or mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's just like a lot of people know me for different things. So yeah. uh my whole thing is like I just want you to know I'm kinda like a polymath. I could do all that. That's what's up. You know what I mean? That's so, what's up. Well after yeah. that, um I started doing my research a little bit and then um, and then I had to ask you here to clarify because then when I the first thing that I remember noticing was that you were I think you may have even told you were, you told me you were in Chicago and then I thought oh so you must be like an engineering school like mm -hmm. like working as a recording engineer mm -hmm. and then the more research I started doing I was like oh but you also rhyme oh but you also do this you do that um, so you like 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 you just said you do a bunch of different things right. What do you feel like you have a thing that is primary for you? Like this is like this is this is my main lane. Uh, definitely music, bro. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying because uh, that started everything, mm -hmm. right? So music, being a musician and being able to express, you know, my my innermost thoughts and things I was going through, yeah. kind of led to this other stuff that I got into. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like with with music, you you create visuals and stuff. So I kind of got a love for making short films and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. or obviously recording the music. I've always recorded my music. I didn't go to studios and stuff yeah. like that. So you learn how to be an engineer. So mm -hmm. I just kind of learned how to do everything on my my own, pretty much, just yeah. so I could be self-sufficient if I ever needed to, right? So, um, but music is what started it. Yeah. And, and I love making music. I love making projects. I love making songs that people could relate to. So yeah. that's number one for me. So do you feel like that some of that came out of necessity? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like it it really was just started off as an outlet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just someone that really was kind of iffy about sharing myself and sharing what I was going through with people. Mm -hmm. I decided to use music as like an open journal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And from there, uh, it just grew from a point where I was like, man, I actually like doing this. This is something like I feel like I could, if I work at it, I could get to a level where I could make a career out of it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's just just how I grew up, man, and, yeah. and, and how I was raised pretty much. I was always raised around music, so it's kind of like a thing. My People in my my dad's side of the family, my mom enjoys music, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So um, it just kind of was inevitable, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I ask that because I can I can relate to that on so many levels, bro. Mm -hmm. um, so, mu so much of what I do, I've done really out of necessity. So yeah. um, if y'all are listening to this, man, I want to <laughs> encourage you to check out uh, the DJ Cliff YouTube channel. We're... I'm I'm working on capturing visual. I've been capturing visuals for a while, right, right. Uh, but primarily when folk come through the radio show, like free, doing freestyles, and 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 there are a lot of videos up there. But I'm trying to start capturing more of these conversations because mm -hmm. folk have have reached out and be like, "Yo, I was listening to the situation, man. It would have been dope to be able to see like the artist." So I'm trying to capture that. Right. So if you go to the YouTube channel, um, there's a great chance that you may see at least clips of this interview with Matt Randall hey. um, at the DJ Cliff YouTube I'm channel. To see that. So go check it out, man. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and um, and and you know, we'll, we'll, I'll continue to throw stuff up there. But I say all that to say, for me, it was the same same way, bro. You know what I mean? When you do things as like when it's just you, when you're yeah. a solo, like when you don't really have a team, you have to figure out how do I do this? How do I capture this? Right. Um, and I have to imagine that that's gone a long way in your creative process, like learning more about visuals, the impact, I should ask, what impact has that has on your, like right. when you're creating the the audio piece? Yeah, um, it was crazy because last night I was just talking about OG Hassan mm. um, and, and it was crazy just talking about the journey and everything. And uh, now I'm, kind of I was just a person that was so focused on making the music yeah. so I would find directors and, and stuff like that visual artists to kind of like really take what I did with the music and like make something crazy you know I've worked with crazy people like crazy talented people like Riley Brown, Shiner Pacific, yeah. um, just people like great people Matt Hayes um, and they kind of took the ideas and 
ran with it. But yeah. now I'm able to kind of come to the table. Like I told him this idea where I have like this kind of like horror film idea. Yeah. You know, and I just pitched it to him. He was just like, bro, that shit crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Like you come, you come a long way yeah. from just, you know, being focused on one thing. Now you're wearing many hats and you're just able to kind of see the whole vision. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like set design and yeah. thing like that, things like that now. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it's just growth, man. That's Honestly. What's up. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about the musical family. So early on when I started doing Welcome to the Neighborhood, which is really the foundation for for everything else that I've done with DJ Click Productions. Right. Um, here in Portland anyway, uh, I would I would just I was searching, man, like looking for local because that's been my, my passion is to support the Portland local Portland scene. Hey, I appreciate that by the way. Thank you, Thank bro. You, man. Yeah, appreciate man. all the support over nah, the that years. That means a lot. That yeah. that means a it's lot. a lot to me, man. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But but looking out to see who is you know who who's who's making music in Portland? Not being originally from here, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to do my research. Right. And so I would find I'd find stuff, you know, random ways find stuff from Portland artists. Sometimes people would send me stuff. Sometimes sometimes people would send me links to other. Yo, you need to check this this individual visual out. This that, and the third. Yeah. And I remember I got this project from this cat. I found it. I don't remember how I found it. And there was a joint that um it was so dope. I had I think I ended up making a radio edit for it because I liked it so much I wanted to play it on the show. Wow. It was this joint called Portland right. from this cat named Quentin. Right. And I remember talking to him online a little bit. And it's funny because I don't feel like I've talked to him online in a while. But like every once in a while, like when I'm going through, like, yo, what am I going to play on the show this week? And I go back into the archives and every once in a while I pull that joint out because I thought it was oh, so wow. dope. You know what I mean? That's ill. So, um, <laughs> That's and crazy. then like now online, you know how it is, bro. Like you connected with, like we all have, you know, thousands of friends. Supposedly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just just because that's how social media is set up. Yeah. So I know I've like there's this cat that I'm connected with, um, Quentin N B G. Yeah. On on uh on one of the social media platforms, just that and third. Bruh, you come in here and you like, yo, that's my big brother. Yeah. I like mean, not even on some like OG stuff, like that's my blood right there. Yeah. Same day. Bro, that's crazy Same, to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like six degrees of separation. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like and yeah, MBG is my collector that I started right in New Beginning Global. So, yeah. um, you know, we've been doing that for a minute, Word. for a while. Word. So like, and I recorded that song you're talking about. That's so crazy. To as me, a bro. kid, like yeah. on a on a Dell computer, yeah, and Adobe Audition 1.5. Yeah. So like yeah. to hear that song, yeah, and that was like 2011 when he dropped that project. Wow. So <laughs> for that to still get played on the radio, yeah. you know, I'm sure he appreciated it, and me too, obviously. No you know what I'm saying? We appreciate the support. Absolutely, so, brother. I mean, and that's it's my crazy. Thing. Small world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I've, I've always said I will continue to say, man, if artists are making good quality music, mm -hmm. if artists are saying something on their music, yeah, and if artists are just good individuals, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to constantly support that. You know, I'm a constantly work to put that out there, use my platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what you've done. Um, and that's Appreciate what you, that's what your collective has done. So let's talk to me about talk to me about about New Global. Yeah. Um what is what is New Global? Who is New Global? So I say it's New Beginning Global, MBG. So uh, right now it's kinda like always the the original people is me, seldom seen, he goes by seldom seen now. Word. He kinda sometimes Quentin, whenever he's feeling yeah. you know, it's like it's like a split personality thing for him. So uh, you know what I mean? I always count John Bells, you know what I'm saying? My brother. Shout out to Bell. Um, Saint, uh, Wingate, Voice, and uh, my boy Just Nice on the East Coast. So, okay, word. Yeah, that's that's really what it is. That's what's up. Yeah. So New Beginning Global, what's yeah. behind that name? MBG. Uh, shoot, we, me and, man, Crazy Stories, like 2002. Uh -huh. So, like, we've been playing with this idea of trying to be, you know, blow up in the rap game or whatnot. So right, right. Um, it was like me, Saint. Uh, my boy Mason and my boy Michael was just walking and we was like, yo, like, cause like 50 just came out. They got G unit and mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm. We was like, yo, we need a crew. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we was just trying to think of names and stuff. And then, you know, everybody was just saying different names and it was terrible. <laughs> like even my suggestions were weak. Yeah. And then Mike was like, yo, what about new beginning? Mm -hmm. And I was just, we just kind of stopped for a second. And then he was, I was like, yo, why, why you say that? He was just like, I mean, cause the type of music you guys make is just like, it'd be like a new beginning in the industry, right? So oh, it's word. just like, you know, just everything we make is kind of like speaks for itself in word. a way. Word. And it's true, like you said, you know, people make good music, be good people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just show love and, and, and reciprocate that. And that's kind of what we stand by and that's our moral. So yeah. um and new beginnings and like our, our uh logo is the Phoenix. So mm -hmm. like Phoenix represents new beginnings, you know. So I right. got like a couple 
I got like two tattoos on me of it. You know what I'm saying? Big ass Phoenix on my neck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's just something that's been, it's longevity. You know what I'm saying? That's like years, like that's 10 so plus sad. in yeah. with this. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I won't stop it till it gets to a point where, you know, recognized around the world. Shit. Like, I just got my Spotify numbers. We in 44 countries right now. That's, that's, what's up, that's insane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's, you know, global. So new beginning, and then my boy Voice, my big bro, shout out to Voice. He added the global to it, mm-hmm. cause like you know, that's the that's the goal and that's the journey. And yeah. and like we actually making that happen. We just keep manifesting what we're doing, and you know what I'm saying. We'll yeah. see. That's what's up. Yeah. So your going back, thinking about your foundations coming up in Portland um, as an artist, as an MC. One of the things that you do here that I think you do well is is you make connections here in the city mm-hmm. and you um, are growing your relationships with artists and, and promoters and curators and DJs in the city. Did that, did the value of that come from, um, you know, working with or seeing what your brother was doing? Like, where does that come from? Cause a lot of times I think it's really, really easy now where I can create music in my own space mm-hmm. and then I can put it into cyberspace and literally get it all over the world. But right. getting it all over the world sometimes is not really what it seems like. But what you, what it feels to me like what you've done is, is you've created these real relationships with people who you can touch and people who can touch you and building that real foundation so that when, when you're putting something out, you have people who know you, who know how you move and can see that and really get behind you. So at any rate, um, where did that, where did that idea, that concept come from of, you know, let me, let me make these, these connections right here at home where I'm at. Yeah, uh, so as far as connections at home, you know, who, who as an artist, you always want that support from your hometown. Yeah. So, like, I think I've sometimes even to a fault that I've wanted that that love and that respect here in the city. Like, you know, I've, I just kind of, like, went overboard or, like, just do too much. But now it's just, like, I've, I always speak about the city. So that's my thing. Like, when you hear my music, you hear my experiences growing up in St. John's. That's yeah. where I'm from. Yeah. Or around here, like like I said, my brother lives two blocks away from where we at right now. Yeah, so I yeah. grew up around here, too. So I just kind of speak about my experiences growing up. You know, I like, like I'll name drop some streets or just, like, a something that happened. You know, yeah. like, it's just, like, it's true and authentic, and you could go back and you could see the receipts. So, like... Just having that support in the city where we was talking about off camera from you, Cool Nuts, OG1, DJ Fatboy, and the list goes on. Like, yeah. that that means a lot to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like being able to have the OGs see what I'm doing, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and, and salute that, and yeah, just yeah. like I salute y'all. So that's important to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's always going to be important to me, I'm, and it could get bigger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm always trying to work with people in the city. You know what I'm saying? I've, I feel like I've I've worked with damn near everybody yeah you know what i'm saying and and that's just what i'm gonna continue to do because you know everybody inspires me to to be who i am word so, up word yeah. up so for folk who are listening maybe they're they're familiar with cliff notes maybe they're not familiar with the radio show so then maybe they're not really familiar with with you stylistically right. um and the music that you make how would you describe like what lane would you say you're in when it comes to that man i i actually created i feel like my own genre as to what it's called, yeah. and I would say uh, it's called impact music. Okay. okay. So like when I when I make music, the first time you hear a song from me, yeah, it's gonna like it's gonna touch you right here first. Word. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm trying to get right to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm trying to get right to your heart, right to your soul and your spirit. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and that's the type of music that I'll always create, even if it's like a, a, a like a more radio friendly record, girl record, whatever. Yeah. I, like I'm gonna say something. Yeah on it you know what i'm saying and you know it's just kind of like just what i want to do right you know what i mean i just write to you i'm yeah. I'm like straight raw relatable yeah. you know what i'm saying that's all those are things i've heard that my stuff is yeah um so as long as i'm making an impact yeah which is interesting which is interesting to me because i love that and that speaks so 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 much to me and uh, my sensitivities and you know just the just the art that i believe in yeah um and i think that it's cool that there is this there's this balance in the hip hop genres now where you get or hip hop genre now where you get to get a little bit of everything mm-hmm. um and for you to move to 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 move in that lane i think is cool you've also though created a a way to balance that with um you know with music that i don't necessarily that's just not in my lane so much mm-hmm. and and have done it 
consistently so you get to reach a wide audience yeah you know what i'm saying you get to reach people um like me who think like me who 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 are who have the sensitivities that i have to having that content behind the music but you've also like you also reach the people who who just want to turn up you know what i mean yeah yeah but i can't i can't imagine that's easy to to have that balance or to or to find that balance it's tough um you know i've always kind of like, i look at people like um who've lasted in the game like yeah. a Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He transcends generations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Busta Rhymes, people like that. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm a relatively young man yeah. still. Yeah. And I just want to, like, you know, I should, there's creative people in their 20s, right. you know, in their teens. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And, and that's always new, fresh ideas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I love working with people like that, you yeah. know, from all ages. Honestly, yeah. like my... I think that's what it is with me and my brother and why we work together good is because I'm younger than him. Yeah. So he's able to, you know what I'm saying, tap into that. Like he he has this record. Um, I'm a part of this band called Stress. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to Harvey Bird, Bay Zoo, Sir Nye. Um, we put out this record called Stress mm -hmm. and there's five songs and one of the joints is called Don't. Mm -hmm. And my, that's my brother at the end. A word. And he's like rapping, like kind of like staccato. Like yeah. it's way different from like the traditional like Portland, right. you know what I'm saying? Like right. way different. Yeah. But I think that gives him the opportunity to like stay fresh with it too. So yeah. like I, in turn, I do that same thing for my younger folks. You know what I'm saying? I work with like DC Capital. Like yeah. that's, you gotta check him out. I'm gonna have to bring him up here. Yeah. Like he's incredible and he's like, he's a young dude. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like Weez and Stato, like a lot of dope, talented young cats right now that yeah. I kind of like, I draw inspiration from that. Cause so I'm able to turn up with them. Yeah. And I could still do some boom bap stuff with, right. with the best of them. Right, right. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of like being versatile. That's my whole thing. That's what's up. I'm like that's a chameleon. And, yeah, I mean, and, and <laughs> yeah. I think, again, that does, like you said, it goes a long way when you think about longevity, um, being able to uh, not ride the way, but being able to speak to different generations, to so speak to different people. Right. Um, but still, at the same time, get that message across. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to get to stress in, in, in a bit, man. Yep. Um, Cause er, most most everything that I knew you for was um, really just straight MCing, yep. rhyming over beats. Yeah, and I remember seeing uh, something about stress mm -hmm. cross my radar, but I didn't I didn't put the I didn't put the con I didn't make the connection as to what that was, yeah. and then you sent me some joints, and I was like. <laughs> I sent no. you the whole. I sent you the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so where did that like once again run down? Run down the members of Stress. Okay. And then, like, where did that come from? Yeah. So, uh, me and uh, Sir Nye, that's my DJ. Yeah. We've been rocking for like a good year plus now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been, you know, I was looking for someone that, you know, would be willing to like grow with me yeah. as my stage presence grew because uh, I feel like. My music, I was so honed in on making the songs, yeah. making the songs sound real good, right. that when I started performing, I was kind of like timid and yeah. nervous still, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had to overcome that. And I just needed somebody that was willing to grow with me yeah. as well. And like now we've built this incredible chemistry. That's my brother, right? So um, we talked about it because this year, as I was saying, I dropped four projects and my goal that's crazy, bro. <laughs> I'm, I mean, yeah, I've never done music at this rate. Yeah. So um, my plan was to try to find at least one producer to with for each project, yeah. right? So um, my goal was to get one in with him, mm -hmm. and we decided that the end of the year would be best. Okay. We initially, we wanted to drop in October, but uh, the day we dropped, November 6th, is actually National Stress Awareness Day. Oh, word. So, like, it was just kind of cool. It, it just made sense. Yeah. And, and so, like, you know, Sir Nye, me and him started the idea. Yeah. Um, my nephew uh, is bass Zeus, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, dope bass guitarist. Yeah. Um, he's been, you know, trying to grow and establish himself as an artist, yeah. you know. And uh, he, we always express interest, always express interest of him, like, playing on some of my records. So yeah. it was, like, a natural fit. And uh, the one who really took this over the top though was harvey bird um he like i reached out to him just like yo man if you ever want to work sometime you know what i'm saying he's been a supporter of mine shows up to shows we've been on shows and rock shows together yeah. so it kind of like we've had built that relationship right so he decided he hit me one day he was like i'm ready yeah so then i just we just brought everybody together 
um the first at first the first day we linked was in july so okay. we started making this project in july okay and the first day we linked we made like seven beats <laughs> and i was just like okay this is you know it's a special right yeah. here and that's when you know uh Bezu slide slid through and, and like he just him and uh Harvey had a great rapport from the jump. Yeah. So uh it just worked out. Yeah. So um and then we dropped the project in November. We did the uh we performed that thesis and yeah, you know, it's it's just kinda grown ever since and That's our plan so. is to kinda release mini EPs from each member. Yeah, yeah. That's so like that was just mine. So yeah, yeah. there's like three more. That's dope, bro. It's dope on so many different <laughs> levels, man. Yeah. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of of like crew records. Yeah. When you have kind of this um this base of of what you just described, where you've right. got artists who are great artists in their own right who can then come together and and pool their resources and pool their talents and put something to get and put something like this together. And I feel like it gives you a great balance to do things with the band but then have the yeah. freedom to maybe experiment and do some other things that don't necessarily fit. I did yeah. a, uh, the episode that I did of Cliff Notes with Randall Wyatt. That was one of the things that we talked about with Speaker Minds, mm -hmm. where Speaker Minds definitely has their lane and and are known for what they do as Speaker Minds. But um, but then being a solo MC as Randall Wyatt, it gives him the freedoms to maybe do some things that um, that maybe don't necessarily fit with what the band is doing, and and then bring all of that together. I think that's I think that's I think that's I think it's huge, bro. Yeah, my whole thing was um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Roots. Oh, word, so, absolutely, all day. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what what they've done, you know, unprecedented, right? Yeah. So, I've always wanted that, and right. I've always wanted to rap over live instrumentation. Yeah. yeah. And to be able to perform with them, because yeah. I think it's just gonna make my my stage presence even better. Yeah. Like I had to overcome being awkward. You know, I'm yeah. like tall, skinny dude yeah, on yeah. stage. I had to find a way to like move on stage. So, um, just with the band, they they eliminate all that, and I just f feed off of their energy too. Yeah. So like, uh, there's a record, the last song on there called Alone, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like da 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 da. So like, they're doing that, and I'm just going off of that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that that live. Yeah. You know, is just just an, another level because like honestly, when you perform. Your your songs off your album, you perform that with a live band, even if it wasn't made with a live band, it yeah. always sounds better anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's my whole thing. I'm trying to last to where like we own like we get casino offers and we own <laughs> yachts and crew. You know what I mean? We own cruises. Like you, I'm about to, yeah. we gonna be like yeah. Frankie Beverly. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's I'm trying up. to last that long. That's you know? What's up, bro. So um, that's what the band gives me. That's gonna make everything grow and 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 I'm gonna last longer and I want to work with them. So like I've kind of like. I'm just gonna do singles as Matt Randall. Right. I'm I'm not even really focused on making like a a project, a Matt Randall project. I'm probably just gonna do singles and then just whatever we do as the band. That's just grow that. And that's that's what twenty twenty looking like for me. No sure. doubt, man. There is definitely something I think to hearing an MC rhyme over over live instrumentation. I think that creates a certain level of freedoms too because right. you know, if the if the band could the band could take it anywhere. Yeah. You know, so it sounds like the record, but then it doesn't sound like the record. Yeah. And you could bring it. I mean, it just gives you so much freedom. And yeah, like we, we've we been talking about how we're going to do different, you know, play things differently yeah. live. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like roll things out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, it's just going to give so much more creative freedom. And my whole thing is about having creative freedom. And right. We, we're going to transition that live. So I'm excited for what's to come with that. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Chopping up with Matt Randall here on the Cliff Nose Podcast. Yeah. Um, Yo, uh, I um, um, every time I do the podcast, man, you know, I'm always I'm always rocking, trying to rock some fresh gear, especially now that we got the video situation. You know, right, what I'm right, saying? right, so right. I should I should, un, I should unzip the Adidas oh. joint and oh. I'm rocking my acapella. You know, what I'm saying okay. the camo joint. I okay. got to give a shout out to Acapella Apparel, man. They've been they've been representing me uh, with the Cliff Notes podcast now for over a year, and they Cliff Notes is celebrating five years this year. Hey, acapella, uh, thank you, brother. Yeah. I appreciate that. And Acapella Apparel is also celebrating five years this year, okay. so um, it's been a great relationship. And I, um, I, I so appreciate building with, like you were talking about building. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate building with a local company like that, man. So I got to give a shout out to Acapella. You should check them out. Uh, their website is acapella.com. That's A K E P E L E dot com. They got some fresh stuff that they released, not only for the five year celebration, but uh, they have uh, some new joints that they released um, that you should really check out. New tees, new bomber jackets, new coaches jackets. Uh, just really, really cool stuff, man. Good quality stuff. 
dope design. So check them out, Acapella Apparel. That's A-K-E-P-E-L-E dot com. So you talked about stresses is something that you're looking at really focusing on moving into the new year, moving into 2020. Right. Um, and and then still having the, the the option to do like solo joints as Matt Randall. Um, what about other collabs? Any any other collabs on the horizon? Things that you that you can talk about. Things that you're looking <laughs> at. You know, saying that you look there. And the reason I bring that up is because um, there's a there's a video that you released recently with Danny Sky. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the name? Which joint? What was the joint that y'all released when you was driving? It's called Ever Wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, visuals was crazy. Yeah. Um, the the joint is dope. Um, a collaboration that feel that just feels really uh, real organic. You know, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I guess where did where does that relationship come from, and 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 the idea of putting that joint out? Uh, man, so I think I, the first time I met Danny was at a a Doug Deep Underground. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, so at one of their events at the old house. Yeah, over on Hancock mm-hmm. uh, Street, and yeah, it's just you know you you seen this dude. He's like six ten, six eleven. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. tall dude out here, just just nice. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, from that point, my whole thing is if I'm at a show, like, and, and someone, like, impresses me, I'm going to go up and, and show love and, yeah. and and all that. So uh, Mia introduced us, and, and from there, we just grew. Um, I had him, I did a short film with, with Riley um, called Calhoun. What was it called? North of Nowhere. North mm-hmm. of Nowhere. Yeah, that's that's the name of uh, the short film. And I had Danny, he made a little cameo in there. It was before he had the long dreads and stuff. So he got this tall dude, you know what yeah, I'm saying, shaking yeah. up. So it's just one of those things, again, like building community. I've always been open to working with people. Yeah. You know, I've worked with a, a lot of the people in the city, like yeah. I said, and it's just natural. So if it if it comes natural and, and we vibe, we link up and we vibe, I'm all for it. Yeah. So um, that's what happened. I think I was just at his house. We was just chilling. Yeah. And, um we were thinking like, man, yeah, we gotta do a record, man. We just haven't done a record yet. Yeah. He had a setup at his house, yeah, yeah. And um, we just pulled up the beat, and then it just went from there. Yeah. And that's how you know, like, for me, I kind of like I write on my own, my own time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I usually write my my golden hours of writing are like twelve to four a.m. Oh, word. So that's when I usually write a lot of my music. <clears throat> um, so to create something on the spot like that, that's when you know. And that record was actually like a year old we made that like last year oh word and then the video we shot back in like may okay so like you know what i'm saying it's just it all time. about time and, yeah. and and like whenever he felt ready yeah to put it out and uh you know it's doing numbers like 12k on youtube that's i was like up. shoot that's cool yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. for somebody like me we, we don't got them i mean i don't have a machine yeah you know so yeah. uh it's cool that people gravitate to things that were you know, created organic. Yeah. So, you yes. know, that's a lot of my music and a lot of my stuff is made at my house. Yeah. So that's what's up. Yeah. Um, you have like you talked about in your music, you have been very um open about your life experiences yeah. and um you talk very much about how important how important how valuable family is to you. Yeah. There's there's this really cool photo of a show that you did. I'm sure it was this summer. Um, over uh, over in Cathedral Park. Yeah. When you on stage rhyming. Yeah. And you got a little man in your arms. Yeah, yeah. So dope, bro. Yeah. So dope. Appreciate it. Um, talk about that. Talk about, you know, being a, being a father and, and having your son be such a part of, of you making your art. Man, uh, <clears throat> he was a turning point uh, for me because I was, I was creating music and I didn't know. I was trying, I think I was trying too hard to be, like, real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, I was telling you off camera, and I'll bring that up, where I used to go by Chose, and I was rapping about things that I just heard in the industry, you know, because at that time it was like Fab, Fab, Punchline King, you know what I'm saying? You got like Lloyd Banks, 50 Cent. Like, I was just trying to be like that. Yeah. So I was just rapping like that. Yeah. And it wasn't true to my experience, and, and my brother seldom checked me on it and was like, man, you're not killing all these people, man. Like, right. chill, stop with that. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And and just be you. Just yeah. rap about what's true to you. People can't, could fact check that yeah. and see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You talking about, like, and just be open. And um, I just jumped in full-fledged. But, like, when I had my son uh, back in 2014, uh, he actually just turned five. So yeah, that was cool. So I just took her to his first Blazer game and all that. Oh, so, word, word. Um, you know, it... It's just life is the best subject matter, and that's something I I say, yeah. and that's something I live by, and I really truly believe. Yeah. So, 
he's part of my life. He, he is, you know, big reason why I'm here. Yeah. So like, you know, it, I just really appreciate that. You know, I didn't have my pops around as much as I wanted growing up. So yeah. I, you know, I had to be here for him, and he's part of everything I do. So it's great to be able to do shows where he could be there. Yeah. And yeah, that image was so powerful. I think uh, his mom actually took the picture. Oh, word. So. It was just, yeah, it was crazy, man. It's just like, it felt real good. And, and um, that's just what it is. It's not a gimmick. This is real. Yeah. So yeah, it, it just feels right. And, and you know, I, I, I was able to take him to Seattle and we played a show. I played a show at a a, a wine winery yeah, yeah. in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. like, yeah, he was there and it was just crazy. And, you know, I, I'm, I plan to take him with me on the road. Yeah. I want to show him the world, yeah. you know, so that's really what it's about. It's so cool for I mean when you think when you when you fast forward and you think as he becomes older and, and has an understanding of what it is that Pops does and that he was a part of that. Yeah. Um that experience is I mean that's an that's a valuable experience. Man, he on the album. Word. <laughs> Word. He yeah, talking yeah. on the album. Yeah, he executive yeah. produced the album. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, that's come what's on. up. Yeah. Um the uh the other thing though I think that comes from that is what you spoke to. You know, I think oftentimes in the past, we would there would be this 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 narrative of you got to keep it real, you got to keep it real in hip hop. Yeah, yeah. And I think oftentimes that was associated with uh, folk who were living in the streets. But I think what we know is is that for for years and years and years, we have folk who have kept it real in hip hop, and they and it's not been about that. Uh, it's not only been about that. Mm -hmm. And I celebrate so much that the the fact that you are that transparent with your music, and you're showing the fact like, nah, this is this is a part of my life too. And the impact that the potential impact that that can have on other people, mm -hmm. um, as they as they choose to make whatever form of art that they make, whether it's music or vis you know visual arts or whatever, um, doing that, have you gotten any sort of feedback from folk um, in terms of your art being an inspiration to them? Man, uh, <clears throat> several occasions, which yeah. is is humbling. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I've had someone literally say that one of my songs saved their life. Word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the song Alignment off of the Project Alignment, mm -hmm. which is like kind of started this whole journey for me as Matt Randall. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, he said, saved his life. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and like, I've heard that a lot of times and like people coming up to me, that's the dopest thing, playing shows and now that I'm confident and, and comfortable on stage, um, people coming up to me and be like, yo, man, that's, you know, it's an inspiration. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's what you're saying was dope and like just people that that are in the game too i remember i, I met uh nicholas f mm -hmm. and uh we played a show in atlanta yeah yeah back during that time too and and i was kind of like green and i was nervous playing in this club mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like yeah. and my music is at that time wasn't right. for the club really right. at right. all and uh he he gave me some great advice and he was just like man you just you just keep spinning that raw shit you know yeah. what I'm saying if it's real to you yeah you just gotta be confident in what you're saying that's what's up and uh you know so that's just what it is for me, like, and it's confirmation, you know, you get the OGs and, and, and telling you that you're on the right path, right. you know, and then I just kept growing, and, and yeah, it's just important, man, it's yeah. just important. No doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Chopping up with Matt Randall. Um, so, the as, as we move into, as we move into 2020, here in Portland now, there are, you mentioned the thesis, there are a number of um, opportunities venues it's funny i've been talking to people a lot recently about how things have changed really in the last three to four years so probably about four years ago um there weren't there just there just weren't as many you or you just didn't see as many um events centered around hip-hop mm -hmm. and now literally every week in the city there's at least one if not two um events that are, that are going on in the city and sometimes more than that and i'm not talking about like touring acts i'm talking about uh, or events and shows that are centered around and promoted by local promoters, mm -hmm. which I think is, which I think is amazing. You know, when we see that growth that quickly and there's so much, there's so much I think that contributes to that. Um, when you are uh, looking at your plans for 2020, how, how much energy do you, do you think you folk will put into live performances versus, versus actually creating music in the, in the studio? Um, yeah, let me start with that question. Okay, yeah. Um, so for one, you know, performing is is big. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely go play a lot of shows. Yeah. Um, but also having that balance of creating new content because yeah. uh, we do have plans to make more music. It's not just gonna be five songs. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm constantly always going to do that. Um, 
Who who? Wait, did Dre say, Andre three thousand say he said I can't afford not to record. I can I'll pay for studio time. Yeah, like, yeah. That's that's my life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I could literally roll out of bed and make some. That's so what's up. I'm always gonna do that. And shoot, uh, even the extension of that. How you said that? Would there have been showcases? Mm -hmm. You know, mic check. Mm -hmm. Shout to them and you know. Uh, events yeah. so i'm actually uh trying to create one myself oh word okay and that's all i'm gonna say okay right that's what's up. That's <laughs> so what's up. i just want to contribute yeah, you know yeah. what i mean yeah, so yeah. like I'm, I'm gonna do something special no doubt okay yeah. okay so, okay well i'll have to come back and we'll talk about that later no doubt yeah absolutely yeah. brother mm -hmm. absolutely but yeah it's gonna be uh it's gonna be dope i um i'm gonna I'm put a pin in that real quick and just say uh if you were <laughs> listening to this mark february 27th on your calendars boom Say that. Okay. Okay. Um, so one of the reasons <laughs> I asked that question is because my my thought process has changed recently. Yeah. In talking to talking to local artists and there's there are you know, having having all of these these opportunities, you see artists performing a lot in the city and there was a narrative that, you know, you gotta be careful, you don't wanna get the city to the point where, oh, I saw him last week or oh I saw her perform, mm -hmm. you know so many times on I see she's performing, I see he's performing. But I was I, I sort of had this this thought that when we consider um other other artists, other performances, um, I was thinking specifically about comedians, right? So a comedian will 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 have like a regular situation and you'll they'll in whatever city that they're in where they're kind of they're kind of working through material. Mm -hmm. So you go see a comedian and yeah, you may be familiar with some of these jokes, but then they're working out new material. And I thought, I wonder if 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 artists who are performing like yourself, whether it's with stress or whether it's solo, if that's something that 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 you think about doing, where you know, let me go up on stage and I got this new joint and I want to see if people are vibing with it. Maybe it's not even done yet. Maybe I got a verse or a couple verses, yeah. and I want to see if people are feeling it. Is that something that that you do? Something that you've thought about doing? Something that you think, no, nah, I would never, I would never present anything until it's complete. Like, what do you think about that? No, I I I do that. Oh, word, sure. word. Yeah, um, there's there's things that I've performed just just live. Word, just for the experience. Because I my whole thing is like building the experience. Got gotcha. you. So, yeah, I've I've definitely done that. I um I got the chance to perform in Washington D.C. and I performed the Calhoun Ave record. Yeah, yeah. Um, I performed that over Nas. I can. Word and like yeah, you just wouldn't have known. You'll never hear it unless you were there. Got you. So like I, I really feel that and yeah, like I like so working up. through new material yeah. just to. It's like yo, I'm thinking if I want to put this out or not. Hold yeah. on, let me perform this for a crowd tonight. Right. right. See what they think. That's what's up. So yeah, it's just you know I I want to have that relationship with, with uh people that come to the shows, yeah. the fans. Yeah. And um you know because a lot of times fans do kind of dictate what's hot and what's yeah. not you know and yeah. I, I make a lot of music i make a lot of songs and sometimes I, you be unsure mm -hmm. if you want to put something out so being able to perform it and just one off sometimes like like i said that that right there yeah. like I, I don't know if i ever do that again so yeah. um yeah that's that's major that's it's important up. to me because you know you build that experience that someone could go back and tell somebody that yeah and that's just a good old-fashioned word of mouth again yeah. it's like yeah you just had to be there yeah you know so I love that, bro, because I think artists on 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 bigger stages, artists on bigger platforms, I think we can appreciate that, right? So if Jay-Z comes through and he does something that's, that's not even necessarily a part of his catalog or he does something that you haven't heard before or, you know, or whomever, I think we see that a lot of times in, in other genres, whether it be rock or singer-songwriter or jazz. Um, you know, we see these things where people are kind of working through things, working them out on stage. I think we embrace that. But I think on a local level, I don't know that we give support enough support to artists to do that. Like, like, let me have that. Let me have that experience with you. Let yeah. me be in that in that space with you as you're kind of working through. Let me kind of have a peek behind the curtain. And so I hope people I hope people hear that and resonate with that and be like, yo, when I go to a show, I actually want to see an artist like not do only what I hear. Like I want to hear the joints that I like from their record, but I want to see them work through something. I want them to to have this experience be be special for for the crowd that's in the room tonight. So I think right. that's super super dope. Yeah, um, 
I think that's important. Mm. It's, it's super important. I, uh, what you said about Jay, I wish I was at that B-Size concert. That yeah. looks so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because people want to see the Jay records that he never, you know, performs at in yeah. all of his shows and stuff. You know, I was actually just watching Fade to Black when I was in L.A. just oh, to word. get, like, inspiration. And, yeah. like, that... That's important, man. Like, you got to do your B-sides. I want to do a B-side concert one day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're performing joints that people haven't heard me play before. Right. And, um, yeah, no, that's that's always going to be a part of my set. And um, just being open, like you said, having that experience with the fans right there, um, I'll tell them, like, yo, I'm nervous. Or, like, I think that's just, like, the – that's how you build that relationship with them, and that's how you build that cult following. Like, yeah. you just let them know how you're feeling at the time. A lot yeah. of people look at artists like they're, they're superheroes. You know what I'm saying? But we all humans, too. We all yeah. bleed red blood. So, like, you know, just being – open and transparent with with the people you're playing for yeah that's major to me and that's what's kind of grown my set i love that bro i love that i love that so so much um one of the thing one of the other things that that we were talking about off air and it's it's a conversation i've been i've been having with a couple people and something i've been thinking about recently um there is a lot of great support in portland uh through different avenues for local artists and as a curator of the scene i can see how that how i've had an impact and how how it has impacted me over the years and we have impact <laughs> see <laughs> yep, impact exactly music. exactly <laughs> um, but you know I, I one of the great things that that we have here in portland is the willamette week best of portland and people i know people you know have their feelings about that i'm trying to get on one you know what i'm saying i don't, I don't, I don't say nothing if i don't though. but the, but so that's that's kind of that's kind of where i'm heading right yeah <laughs> so first of all i, I love it that. because the radio station i represent x-ray fm has been voted uh best radio station in portland five years running through that poll so mm -hmm. i know you know i definitely appreciate that i see yeah. the benefit and the, the benefit of that yeah but i also know that i can be very guilty of um being being more aware of the people who have who are making the most noise in that moment whether it's because they have a machine or whether it's just because they have a great project that you know that i'm that i'm really really rocking with mm -hmm. but after the fact sometimes you go back and you look and you realize wow, wow there are these other artists who who i really dig and I, you know i don't see their name on that list i didn't put their name on that list or whatever the case may be um so so how do you how do you navigate that as an artist what impact if any does it have on you um, do you give it any thought? Um, but again, what how what what impact does that have on you as a as a as a creator of art? Oh man, I didn't think I was gonna talk about lists. Come on, man. bro. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's Cliff you know, Notes, baby. Lists is um, <clears throat> excuse me. Lists is um, it's just opinions. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. And um, lists don't define what I'm trying to do. Right. Um, I wouldn't say that it's something that I think about in terms of why I make music. Mm -hmm. Um, it's nice to to have, like I said, I always want peers and I want people to recognize what I what I do because yeah. I feel like I get busy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I really, you know, do this yeah. with some of the best. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Rock with the best, you know? And um, it's fun. You know, it's 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 a cool thing to talk about. So, you know, accolade, whatnot. But yeah. come, being someone that isn't really mentioned on this, uh, it doesn't define what I do, but I feel like I could... I'm t I'm toe to toe with everybody on the list, yeah, yeah. so yeah. That's what's up. That's, <laughs> That's up. what it is, mm -hmm. you know. Like, mm -hmm. and it's just you know, just it, you know, shout out to everybody that be on the list, right? You know, what I'm saying it's dope. Right. Yeah, you know. And it's it's I I look at it a couple different ways. You know, I, the one thing I look at is, and maybe maybe this is just this is just the way that I see it. Yeah. I, I think of you know everybody has a top five, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is which is absolutely 100 percent opinion you know what i mean Most you definitely. ask me my opinion of on who i think yeah you know what i'm saying this is this is my top five exactly yeah and i think when we come together as a community and then we have it in a publication like that once again i think there are so many things to consider like did everybody turn in their top five you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying did, um Again, who's making the most noise in that moment when that list was created? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, as you're thinking about that and you're you, you know you're looking back over the year, it is it, it is easy to omit folk. One of the things that I appreciated though, and this is this is a conversation. Shout out to Wifey. This is a conversation I have with Wifey. Often. Okay. So my wife's a big fan of like a lot of the the the, the like the shows, the talent shows, and America's Got Talent, and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so uh, she's watching The Voice right now. And she was saying, you know, recognizing that even the person who doesn't win the contest, even the person who isn't the champion of the contest, um, that individual is still going to grow their fan base because yeah. their name is on is, is is a part of that conversation. Yeah. And so to me I feel like the more we can do that as a local community, the more we can just talk about people who are in our community, the better we are going to grow that community because speaking of you know my interpretation of what you were talking about. Yeah, it's so dope to be recognized by by your neighborhood, yeah. by people who are around you. Yeah, That's yeah. really really cool. Yeah. But to really grow what we're trying to do as creators and curators we really want to reach people outside of our neighborhoods Most definitely. so people who are on the outside looking in global baby exactly <laughs> exactly there it is there ABG it is you know what i'm saying that's, that's what we about so i you know i i hope that that we as we as the local portland hip-hop scene um will remember that so when we're outside portland like you talked about we talk about portland Man, you know that's... that we talk about all right who in portland right now is making noise it's funny um, the by the time this one drops, the the Steve O the Weirdo interview will have dropped, and that was one of the things that Steve O talked about. You know, if 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 Matt Randall, if stress drops, the local scene, if it's if it's a dope project, the local scene should be behind that. If stress does yeah. a show, the local scene should be at that show to a certain degree. Because now I think about something that Versa, Versatile said to me. Um, if you're an artist, I get sometimes you might not be at the show because you're creating your art, you're working, you're putting in work. But I think what we have to do is, is we have to look at our fan bases. So if you rock with me, stress is doing a show at this venue at this date. People who support me, you need to be at that show. Right. And I think I think the more we can do that, the more we can find ways to do that, the stronger the scene becomes. Yeah. Because if everybody does, if everybody encourages their audience to support the next, the next man. Then the, the scene is stronger. At the same time, I think we also have to hold one another accountable. If yeah. you put out a garbage record, yeah, please tell me exactly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 it's and it's and we got to quit looking at it as oh they're hating on me. Right. No, what they're saying is you represent me because you you're making music coming from my city. Right. So I can't let you just make garbage music. It, and when you make solid music, I will definitely absolutely get behind and support and and you need to do the same thing to me and i think if we do that we go you know we go we we, we go a long way in 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 really pushing this thing forward i so, agree no i agree that's my soapbox what you said 100 <laughs> percent. no and that's you know exactly yeah 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 hold me accountable word up yeah and like with the list thing it's like yeah my name not mission on this is just work harder man yeah. some motivation in terms of just keep building and and building upon what I've been doing. I've been having a, a crazy year. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that's talked about. Yeah, no you know doubt, I mean? no doubt. Twenty nineteen was crazy for me. And you know, the other thing I think to remember is, and and as a curator, again, I can get caught up in because I'm always trying to um, to support folk. I can I can get caught up in. Oh, here's the next record I need to support. That here's the next record I need to support. That and I look back and a joint that dropped six months ago that I was really I was really into mm -hmm. that I I was playing joints from. I forgot about these other like these other uh, tracks from the project, mm -hmm. and I need to go back and I need to revisit that. And that's something that's going to change for me in 2020 in terms yeah. of how I support artists, right? Um, right. Which is going to be which is going to be interesting. I've been I've been anyway. So uh, <laughs> y'all just be on the look for some changes that way. Yeah. You have a you talked about the four releases that you that you dropped in 2019, right? But you have a catalog of music, bro. If people are trying to uh, really get to know. To, they want to see your growth as an artist. Yeah. What's the easiest way to tap into your catalog? Um, man, you could go to mattrandall.com. Word. M-A-T-R-E-N-D-O-L.com, yeah. and everything's there. Um, I made, like, an Apple Music playlist where it's got, like, everything, Okay. you know, of mine on there. I need to – I'm about to create a Spotify playlist like that, too. You can find it on all the platforms. Okay. If you Google me, shit, I've I seen I was Google verified. I was like, hey, it's lit. So <laughs> yeah. you could definitely find everything I've ever done That's what's there up. on yeah. Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Google me, it'll pop up. So, I mean, um, and I often do it. I often post about it just to kind of remind people, like, of the journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just did that the other day, just, like, lay it all out. Yeah. So yeah. I'm always constantly, because all of those things I've done has just been stepping stones. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It may be, sound cliche, but... Every project I've 
improve. Yeah. And yeah. like that's just my whole thing. I'm just gonna keep doing it. That's what's up. Yeah. Do you have a um do you have a of, of all the music that you've put out, do you have a favorite song? Like whenever I perform, I'm always gonna do like this is just the, of the stuff I've created. And I know oftentimes the 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 music you create most recently you you feel like this is my best work because mm -hmm. you have grown to that point mm -hmm. but when you look at your whole catalog is there a joint that you feel like like this is my favorite so somebody says i want to jump into the into the matt randall um discography where do i start where, which what, what do you say go listen to this one first it's a toss-up between calhoun af because mm -hmm. you know that's, that's just my life you know in in a record if you want to hear like my experience and how everything kind of shaped me the way i am yeah that record and then built um, you know, built is just like a how you said being able to kind of uh, relate to the OGs yeah, yeah. and also um, kind of have that turn up with the younger generation. Right. Like it's that record right there is like both. Yeah, in yeah. one. You know, what I'm what saying it's like it sounds big. You could play it at a Blazer game like OG One has, yeah. but you could also listen to it as just like from a listening, just like oh okay, right. You know, yeah. I get it. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like those two. I would up. say, and then you know, just rec these records are stress right now. That's why I'm really vibing to. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Y'all go get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, uh, I I am I'm I'm happy I'm happy for for what you've done thus far, bro. It's cool to see your growth. I'm happy to see where you are right now as a creator. I mm -hmm. think it's exciting. I think stress. I'm excited for stress because I see how excited you are for it. Yeah. And like I said, I think it's cool to see that now you have another creative outlet in addition to what you do as a solo artist and um excited to see what you know what 2020 brings for y'all for real yeah man it's it's gonna be fun we're gonna make some, a lot of different type of songs i might do some rock might do some country y'all yeah. know you know we trying to get them numbers up for next year you know what i'm saying so, so like man. i don't know i'm i'm open man i'm i'm an open book right now yeah and i'm i'm willing to like create anything no doubt no doubt one more time bro if people want to want to vibe with you if they want to connect with you um, what's the what's the easiest way to do that? Because I know you on your social, so yeah, uh, M A T R E N D O L. Everyone spells my name wrong, and that's just <laughs> I don't know why my mom named me with one T. Everybody, you know, I'll go to Starbucks. They are gonna put two T's on my <laughs> on my name anyway. So uh, yeah, that's how you can find me, man. You, everything: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I still got Snapchat. It's funny. I might got a Black Planet still. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> Uh, Lime Wire, all that, Kazaa, y'all can find me on everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just uh, check me out, man. I appreciate you having me here. Bro, come you know on, man. I, come I, on. I mean, I need to just spend the night over here, bro. It, look, this this this, this <laughs> is the spot. X-ray is the spot for real, yeah, for real, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, once again, bro, thank you so much for coming through. Thank man. you for thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for making the art that you make. Yeah. Uh, thank you for for your transparency, bro. Um, and just thank you for being real, bro. I got to man Anytime you guys need me To do anything Pull up That's what's up Any of y'all need me I'm here That's what's up yeah. I may be I may be I may be hitting you up About some things Come on In the new year I'm ready My dude All right. Um, Once again man I gotta give some shout outs Big ups to X-Ray FM For continuing to be Gracious hosts Of the recording Of the Cliff Notes Podcast Check them out X-Ray.FM 24 hours of Terrestrial radio man You can check me out Every Saturday night On X-Ray uh, It's the Welcome to the Neighborhood Radio show where I try to, uh, I don't try to, I feature and really support the local hip hop scene yeah. and represent the uh, the underrepresented in a big way. Shout out X-Ray, man. No doubt, Show no love, doubt. Love. Um, also, big ups to my folk over at Acapella Apparel for their continued support of the Cliff Notes podcast. Check them out, A-K-E-P-E-L-E.com. And last but never, ever least, yeah, big man. ups to the homie, Theory Has It, for man. creating the official theme song for the Cliff Notes podcast. Shout out Theory, man. Legend. That's the homie, man. Legend. Check out his new project. Please. His latest release. I love it down here. Bro. So Dane. Dope. So dope. My Dane dog. on the productions for real, for My real. Dog. Um <laughs> Theory has it's the homie. Yeah. Um uh, other things, man. If you uh, if you're interested in some in some uh, some kicks, man, check out the official DJ Cliff kicks. There's a link on the DJ Cliff website. Just go to djcliff.com. Uh, I'm all over social media at DJ Cliff. 
Uh, once again, man, subscribe to the Cliff Notes Podcast wherever you get your podcast. It really means a lot. So go ahead and subscribe and rate if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that, that, that goes a long way. You can also check us out on Alexa if you rock with Alexa. Just say, Alexa, uh, enable the Cliff Notes Podcast. Shout out Alexa. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you can also check me out on YouTube. We're recording a YouTube video. Shout out to everybody out there in YouTube land. Shout out YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the DJ Cliff YouTube. Look, for real, for real, if you're listening to this, especially if you've anybody, if I've played your joints, if you've been on the Cliff Notes Podcast, if you've done mic check, if you've done anything, bruh, come on. Ladies, you just subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. I should have like twenty thousand subscribers because that's impressive. I mean. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and subscribe to that. Um, and and yeah, man, continue to rock with us. Remember, lock February the twenty seventh on your calendars. I'm, I'm be there. Whatever there's, it is. there's an event that is going to be happening, okay. and you will be hearing more about that. I'm pretty excited. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, uh, continue to rock with us, man. Once again, big ups to Matt Randall. Follow him. Yeah. Uh, buy the new Stress Project. It's available everywhere. Buy it all. And uh, God willing, we'll be back to do this again soon. So until then, we out. Peace. You got, you got shoes, man. Buy your shoes. <laughs>